So I'm glad to be here today and excited to share some of our findings and experiences. Um, a lot has changed in um, genetic testing practices in the past few decades uh, in terms of the scope of tests done. Uh, the scope has increased uh, immensely uh, with an increased number of conditions being tested or overall number of tests done. The number of results disclosed has also increased and also the number of positive results that disclosed is increasing. So this means also that the approaches have changed. Uh, so previously, um, genetic testing was mainly done for specific clinical indications and uh, it was largely a diagnosis focused approach, whereas now um, uh, we're moving more towards broader testing approaches and uh, towards preventive approaches. And this means also that the process of delivering, delivering results is changing, uh, but the, the questions of who, when, and how are still uh, unanswered, and the discussion is ongoing. So in the Estonian Biobank, um, we have had uh, a very different return of results project in the past uh, nine years. And uh, most of these were already uh, mentioned in the previous talks, but I will uh, cover um, the findings that we have gathered from uh, participant feedback. I've divided those projects uh, based on um, how the information has flow, uh, f uh, how the flow has been, the direction of the information. So in some projects, the biobank has uh, contacted participants to uh, offer return, return of certain results. In some projects, uh, results were returned uh, in a healthcare setting. And in a final project, um, involving the largest number of participants, uh, it was actually uh, participants who expressed interest in uh, receiving results from the biobank. Um, and in each case, the approaches for delivering results is different because the project goals and the type of results are different. And, and so also are different uh, communication needs in delivering results. So let's look at the first type of projects. Um, uh, in this case, the main considerations from uh, our perspective is uh, the duty to warn, beneficence, and right to know, as well as not to know. Uh, results in this case um, involved clinically significant findings, actionable findings, and uh, Neme briefly um, uh, introduced those projects. Uh, so in this case, our example projects are involving hereditary breast and ovarian cancer and familial hypercholesterolemia. These findings are relatively rare. Uh, that means that a small number of participants are engaged. So um, we're talking about under, under hundreds here. And in these cases, uh, it was more like a, a classical genetic counseling offered uh, by genetic specialists from the biobank. Now, in healthcare setting, the considerations are um, the same, but uh, um, genetic counseling is provided by specialists in healthcare setting. And in these example cases, these uh, included uh, primary care physicians, oncologists, and in some other projects, uh, cardiologists. But the types of results offered in these examples uh, included uh, polygenic risk scores. And that means that the larger number of participants were also engaged. And in the final example, uh, that we're talking about uh, and call it the broad uh, return of results project, uh, because in this case, uh, we offered broad range of results, basically including clinically significant findings uh, and as well as risk scores, as well as uh, pharmacogenomic uh, findings. And why we uh, included this broad range of results was 
because the main consideration was uh, uh, considering participant interests and re reciprocity and offer basically something for everybody who was interested in receiving results. In this case, uh, we had 3000 participants uh, in the project and uh, we actually limited the, the number uh, there. Uh, I think the interest would have been greater. Um, and uh, the results were offered through trained counselors from the biobank, but not limited to a medical geneticist and genetic counselor in this case. Um, so actually I will uh, just quickly skip this one for a second. So what can we say when we look at the, uh, uh, the feedback uh, gathered from participants? And this slide is based on the last uh, broad uh, return of result project with these 3000 participants. Uh, but it seems, uh, as Meme briefly showed, that the trend is similar in other projects as well. So when we look at the, the feelings reported uh, before, after return of results and six months later, we see that the general trend, trend is that uh, participants are feeling calm, relaxed and content, and uh, they tend not to be worried, tense or upset. Um, when we compare how the feelings are before uh, compared to after re receiving results, we see that there is a significant change and there is an increase in the number of participants feeling calm, relaxed and content, content after receiving results. And there is a significant decrease in uh, those uncomfortable feelings. So uh, I think we can uh, conclude from here that return of results with genetic counseling has had a positive effect. When we look specifically at participants who have received high risk information, so for instance, high uh, risk uh, in genetic uh, risk score for diabetes, or even for these clinically significant findings such as this hereditary breast cancer syndrome, uh, it actually it's not associated with an uh, increased risk, uh, increase in uncomfortable feelings. So there's not necessarily a difference in reported feelings when we compare participants with high risk uh, with others. Um, in general, uh, and it, this is similar in uh, projects with clinically significant findings, uh, uh, most participants, a great, great majority, do not regret participating. And they would actually uh, do, uh, uh, do the same thing and same decision again and participate and receive results again. There is a small percentage, one percentage who do regret uh, participating. Um, and when we look at who or why, why could this be? Um, just example of few of the comments given by participants. It generally seems to be um, to do with the disappointment in uh, the type of results that they were given, uh, receiving too few, uh, results uh, or participants expected to receive uh, specific answers to specific questions um, related to um, uh, maybe conditions uh, in their family. So uh, I think it uh, raises the point that uh, there's an importance of transparent and clear plans regarding uh, return of results and the logic behind uh, results uh, provided or how, how they are generated. Uh, when we look at the, the uh, few percentage percent of uh, responders who, um, who did feel uncomfortable feelings after receiving results, and we're talking about, let me just quickly see, 2.5% uh, of participants uh, who 
after results reported feeling um, uh, worried, upset, and uh, tense. And the biggest risk factor actually for this group was that they were feeling worried, tense, and upset before receiving results. So it was independent from the results provided. And again, perhaps in this case, uh, more clear uh, and transparent uh, description of the plans and results provided could maybe help in this case. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, sorry about that. Um, so when we look at the, again, the participants receiving uh, high risk information, um, uh, it actually uh, was also uh, associated with feeling content after receiving results. Uh, so, for instance, in case of uh, uh, risk factor for thrombophilia or, again, for uh, variants related to hereditary cancer syndromes. And uh, based on the comments given by participants, it, it seems that uh, generally they just uh, value being, uh, so to say, warned and having a chance to uh, address and reduce their risk. Um, So in all of our projects, we have had uh, results delivered through face-to-face -face, uh, communication. And uh, in our biobank uh, projects, uh, many of those projects were also provided, uh, included genetic counseling by genetic specialists. Um, looking at the comments provided by participants, uh, this face-to-face -face communication is uh, something that they really do value, but it is also a major bottleneck. Uh, so those 3,000 participants were, were uh, counseled over two years. And considering that we have 200,000 participants in the biobank, this project will last a long, long time if we continue the same way. So we really need to consider other um, options. And we have actually already included other options uh, in these uh, other um, projects uh, in clinical healthcare setting. Um, so um, in this um, approach uh, uh, proposed by Ormond et al, uh, uh, they propose dividing the type of uh, communication based on uh, type of results uh, offered because the needs for risk communication are, are different in uh, each case. So for instance, uh, traditional genetic counseling would be uh, necessary when emotional and familial implications are likely, like in these uh, uh, clinically significant findings. Uh, now, in targeted discussion, uh, as we had uh, with, um, with, with in our projects, we involved cardiologists and oncologists in cases where personalized risk management and treatment uh, was considered. And sometimes brief communication uh, with a primary care provider is a great, uh, is great way to uh, uh, communicate risk in cases of encouraging health behavior change. But uh, it, these, these examples, again, involve face-to-face -face counseling. And I think uh, other options or modes of um, risk communication, um, such as digital tools, would also be uh, very helpful in addition to everything previously mentioned. Uh, just a few examples uh, uh, where, where digital tools uh, could really complement everything else uh, would be, for instance, in cascade screening, uh, 
where uh, the uh, response rates for uh, relatives uh, involved in the project uh, could, could be improved. And in many cases, the index individual actually reported having difficulties in communicating uh, risk information to relatives and appreciating help, help with that. And in this case, digital tools could really be used in facilitating information sharing between relatives. Another example would be, for instance, uh, in uh, improving long-term medical adherence. Uh, for instance, in case of screening recommendations or uh, treatment plans, perhaps automatic reminders could help to improve in these scenarios. Um, so just to summarize, uh, we see in our projects that there is great interest in, uh, in receiving genetic information, but practicalities matter, uh, such as uh, access to receiving results, even in cases where, uh, for instance, uh, primary care physicians were in all districts of Estonia versus in other projects where, um, where results are only offered in two cities in Estonia. The, uh, response rates uh, vary and uh, um, genetic risk information is not uh, harmful but uh, viewed as valuable by participants. Um, transparency regarding plans and logic behind the uh, re return of result project setup uh, would be beneficial and maybe could decrease the number of participants having those uncomfortable feelings before and therefore also after uh, receiving results. And uh, there's a great need to consider alternative modes for risk communication. So in terms of mainstreaming genetic counseling uh, to other specialists, as well as considering alternative uh, modes of co uh, communication so not just face-to-face, -face, but maybe considering some digital tools.